put in place meeting to work. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call, Richard? Here. Juanita? Here. Seager? Ernie? Here. Approval of minutes from regular meeting on October 2nd, 2018. <laughs> Approval of agenda for October 16, 2018 regular meeting. I make a motion that we approve the agenda for October 16. Second. Okay, I have a motion on the floor uh, by Juanita to approve the agenda for October 16 regular meeting, which is tonight's meeting. A second by Richard. Roll call, Richard. Four. Juanita. Four. Ernie. Four. Motion passes. Uh, new business. Uh, approval to pay Bahannon Houston for the water PER. Uh, this is an invoice we got from Bahannon Houston for $53,932.11. We do get reimbursed uh, by the NMFA for $50,000 of that. So our contribution is $3,932. I make approval to pay invoice to Bahannon Houston for the amount of $53,932. I second that motion. We have a motion on the board to approve the invoice from Bahannon Houston for $53,932 by Ernie and second by Juanita. Roll call, Richard? Four. Juanita? Four. Ernie? Four. Right, motion passes. Uh, item number nine is approval of acceptance of property at Highway 60 in Wilson. Um, there has been a change in this, so we are going to uh, probably table this. What happened is, I guess she decided that she, she was either going to give it to the town or the county, she said, and then she decided that she's going to get someone to um, come and uh, yeah, praise the, the, the property and see if she wants to change her mind about giving it away. So, um, we can have a motion to table this. I'll make a motion to table. Donation at Highway 16 in Wilson. I'll second it. All right, we have a motion by Richard to uh, table approval of acceptance of property donation at Highway 16 in Wilson. A second by Ernie. Roll call, Richard. Four. Juanita. Four. Ernie. Four. Right. We'll bring that back once she decides. I just have a question. I know that we have uh, properties throughout the county, but I don't know if Town of Mount Mayor, eventually, is the Town of Mount Mayor going to sell those properties, or is so it just there? Um, we haven't really talked about doing anything. I'll talk to you guys about doing stuff like that, but yeah, we do have several properties across Mount Mayor. Um, I'll have Dennis work on the map of what it is. I know that we own the building like over there on that side of the thing, and we need to turn that down because we're actually abating properties, and that's one of the worst properties in the by the town. So we really need to go in there and abate that property ourselves. It's, uh, you know, when you cross the tracks and then you go along the curb, when you go straight kind of by where our um, gas pipeline thing is, up like on the hill, there's like a building there. And it's like, you can, you can see like inside of it, it's like has no doors, no windows, no nothing. That's the property. Everyone wants to sit down, but we really need to tear it down and decide you know, what we're going to do with the line itself. So. I think that we brought up once before mm -hmm. for abandonment, mm -hmm. and then uh, I guess, uh, our department, uh, Philip, mm -hmm. I think he wanted the material, him and Michael Taylor, I believe. And they were supposed to have done it, and then they never finished it. Yeah, we need to go in and, and actually tear that down. Um, one of the abatements from last meeting, just real quick, now that we're talking about land, for Rosemary uh, Lovato, she actually still owns it, technically, from the county. Is that the county saying that? 
but the bank was supposed to propose and but they didn't record nothing. So she still technically owns it. So I told her that she has till the end of this week to decide or to call the bank, to call the county, to decide all that kind of stuff. And then once she decides what she's gonna do with it, if she does own it or not, or the bank, then we'll make a decision. So I did give her till the end of this week to figure out what she's gonna do. So and then on another side subject, I did call uh, the guy that owns the um, property with the trailer right there by the burn site. And uh, he's went up on his price again, so now he wants 48 though. He was a 25, was that right? He was a 25, and then when I called him, he decided that he was going to go up because the town was interested. He went up to 45, and now it's up to 48. But we'll see what happens. <laughs> He's going to have it for a really long time. Um, okay, moving on. Approval to change next town council meeting date. Um, so I had changed it to the 7th, which was the day after, because the general election falls on November 6th. However, I was told that there may be some conflict with um, Richard and Ernie being at a training that week. Yep. So we may have is to post. Ernie? Yes, it is. Mm. We're going to be there night of the 6th, and it's the 7th, 8th, and 9th. So we may move into the next following week. Would that work? That would be November 13th. On the 20th, yeah, we have another one after. Does it have to be a Tuesday? It doesn't. But there's on 7th, 8th, and 9th. So, I mean, the Monday? Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Are you guys good Monday the 5th? Does that work? I will be here. here. I will be there. Yeah, I'll 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 be that for all that Friday, I'm out. Unless you want to do it the, the November 2nd on a Friday, the week before. It's up to you. Two weeks away. Two weeks, and then the next one will be about 18 days, a couple of minutes. Later. So the 2nd or the 13th for the fall? What are you guys thinking? Except for that week of the fifth, I'm I'm good with all those days you just mentioned. So. so I'm good for the second. I'm good for the whatever you guys want. We'll put the 13th thereafter. I'm good either way. I don't know if I want to spend my Friday night in here. <laughs> Does anybody else want to spend their Friday night in here? Because I haven't seen the uh, football. What's the schedule? Is that state yeah. track meeting or state the uh, not track meeting state football meeting? I say we just move to the 13th. We've been on our Tuesday. Okay. We've done the weeks. The okay. meeting is one week prior to Yeah. So the 13th? Yep. Okay. Okay. Any bad form of motion? I make a motion to move November's May to November 13th. Okay, okay. All right, I have a motion on the floor to move the uh, November 6th meeting to November 13th account of the general election. A second by Richard. Roll Paul Richard. Four. Juanita. Four. Ernie. Four. Motion passes. Okay, moving on. Approval of town position on five-member county commission board. Uh, Javier Sanchez, our county commissioner for the third district, is here. What does this entail and what is the process? So 
adding two members to the county commission would require redistricting in order to accommodate space for two additional board members. That means that the county would be redistricted into five districts as opposed to the three that are existing. <coughs> and the process for a county to move from a three-member board to a five-member board is as follows. And you begin by passing a resolution, a unanimous resolution, uh, of the county's intent to move to a five-member board. So without that unanimous first step, you can't even get it going. So that's step one. Step two is to conduct the redistricting in order to get an idea of what what uh, the county's districts might look like. Then step three is to hold a public hearing where you present these maps to the public and you get feedback, you get input. The final step is the vote on the ordinance, the presentation of the ordinance to the county commission and the vote. And the vote is required unanimous. So the same, at the very first step, it needs to be unanimous, and at the very last step, it needs to be unanimous. So back in January, it became apparent to me pretty quickly that um, a three-member three member board does not suffice at the county, that a five-member board just makes a lot more sense. The diversity of the communities that we have to represent, the size of the districts, not necessarily the size, I think more the diversity. Um, we have so many different communities and have so many different needs, it's very difficult to, to move on the issues. By the same token, I don't believe that a three-member board allows, it doesn't facilitate enough, it doesn't give us enough opportunity to discuss matters, to conduct research. It doesn't give the county commission the ability to create subcommittees to look at research to, so that we can actually have better better discussions. Um, we, look at, we look at the past, kind of what we've seen. Uh, we've had a three-member board in this county as long as we've been a county, as long as we can look back. I've tried to conduct some preliminary research into kind of the history of the three-member board and how often we've redistricted in the past. In other words, how long have the existing districts been in place, things of that nature. I know for a fact that uh, as early as, as 1922, there was a three-member board, for sure. I also know for a fact that uh, since 1973, the current districts have been in place, since at least 1973. I couldn't find any record of when the current districts were districted. So we might have had a different district, let's say in the 20s and 30s, than we do now. We might have had, we may have had different districts. However, um, as early, as 1973, the districts maintained their current shape. That's a long time, by the way. And in any event, um, if we look more at our more recent past, um, the three-member board, I don't believe, has functioned well. I think uh, it has resulted in, in some very negative uh, happenings over at the county. Uh, when we look at, we look at uh, situations where the county is divided consistently in a consistent manner in a, in a, in a two-member versus one-member atmosphere. Um, that, that has been a, kind of the consistent, the consistent pattern of behavior at the county. Um, at least since I've been here. I've been in the county for eight years. I've lived in Thomas County for eight years. And uh, when I moved here, that was the case. And it remained the case. Uh, I've been, I've seen it prior to myself, I, I saw two other commissioners. And during those commissions, it was very much evident that it was, a, it was a two versus one type situation. It resulted in a very unhealthy atmosphere. There was a lot of infighting. Um, there was also a lot of suspicion. There was scandal. There was a circus like atmosphere and the commission meetings. Very negative. Very negative. <coughs> These infightings prevent us from having the conversations that we need to have in order to bring progress to our community. I also find that in trying to bring progress and bring attention to issues, it's very difficult to, to have wholesome discussions with fellow commissioners. It's very difficult to do that. Um, just because the my, my experiences with uh, the Estancia Valley Salvador Waste Board, some issues that I've picked to really try to to, to bring some reform and try to bring some progress to the county. Uh, the level of, 
of, of resistance is 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 is, is formidable. And, and I've come to the conclusion that what we need in the county is a better system. A better system. I think we rely, with the three-member board, we rely on personalities to, to, uh, to exhibit unbiasedness. And I think that uh, it just doesn't happen. It's inherent that a three-member board be stacked in a two versus one manner. So I, I think that needs to be eliminated from the county. The other thing that I think that needs to be eliminated is the the, the situation where we've all perceived that, that the, the, our northern uh, our northern districts tend to get uh, get a, a certain level of of attention and influence they have a certain level of influence. That's that's I don't think as far as my my experience there's there's no doubt there's no doubt about it. But I think uh, as long as the division exists where we have a north versus south type mentality. And our districts facilitate that perfectly. I think we cannot move forward on the issue. We need to we need to be able to, to work together and we need to we need to be able to come together. And the system that we have doesn't do it. We need a system that allows better representation for all of our communities. In other words, just because let's say a particular community is favored by the current map that we have, doesn't mean that that community actually benefits from its perceived um, geographical position. On the contrary, if the county commission can't work together and move, move together as, as one, you can't move forward on the issues. If you have two versus one, even the two that are saying, you know, <coughs> We got it made. They really don't have it made because they're just creating a worse situation than not even their community benefits. Nobody benefits. It ends up it ends up just being a mess. So I feel that a, a five member board is, is, is absolutely necessary. And it, to that end, I brought it up way back in, in January, I put it on the agenda and after some discussion, some preliminary investigation as to as to how we might go about this. We, we took step one, resolution 2018-13. The 13th resolution that we passed in this year was a notice of intent to move to a five-member board. This was February, and it was voted on unanimously. So each of the commissioners felt that there was merit to, to, to the benefits that a five-member board might bring. Um, then shortly thereafter, in about March, about March, we, uh, the county commission, directed the manager to enter into a contract with New Mexico Research and Polling to conduct the redistricting. In other words, we wanted to get an idea of what the maps would look like, because that that really has a lot to do with whether or not we sort of support a, a particular plan or not. And so that took several months for that to be carried out by New Mexico Research and Polling. But recently, um, I believe towards the end of August, several plans were presented to the county, several different maps. And so we looked at the maps. We had a series of workshops to try and determine which map best fit our, our vision. So I wanted to share, share a, there's two basic ideas that were born out of the maps. We got like eight maps, but there was two basic ideas. Okay, there was two basic, very basic ideas. One idea that is plan A, and another idea that is plan B. It's now plan B2. I'm going to pass these out to you so you can take a look at them. If you'd like to make a copy for each of you, you could. They're, they're, if you want one of black and white copies, it would be hard to see, but a, a color copy would be good if it's possible. But plan A <coughs> was one general idea. So one general idea was, let me back up. What would I look at if I wanted to read this? What should a commissioner look at? Well, I was interested by various different things. My, my intent would be, when we look at redistricting, how do we make it so that commission districts overlay existing levels of governance and allow a certain level of seamlessness that enhances representation? 
in other words, how do we overlay the commission districts over existing demographic and, and geographic boundaries so that people get the maximum amount of representation so that they get, so that they're able to, to come to an individual, their commissioner, and have that seamlessness move across school district lines, DOT lines, various different lines, municipal lines, land grant boundaries. How do we overlay this to where it respects communities? It's about respecting communities. All of our communities weren't just born. They have a long history. How do we respect that heritage? How do we take into account not only past, the past, but also current issues? So I was interested in many different lines. It wasn't about just how many drinks of precincts and moving population here and there and trying to balance the population. It was about it was more intricate than that. More intimate than that. I'm trying to figure out how do we give the people of Torrance County better representation. Because I perceive that the current system does not do that, does not deliver that adequately. So one thing that was important to me was unifying communities. I wanted all of our communities to be within one commission district. I didn't want communities to be divided. It didn't make any sense to have Estancia, you know, to have Allen Ayers or have any Walker Street be the dividing line and have commissioners, one commissioner uh, represent one side and another the other side. It didn't make any sense. We need to have our communities unified. So that was a major concern for me and something that doesn't exist at the present time. At the present time, District 1 and District 2 are divided by the center of Moyard. I wanted to make sure that, how do we make it to where all of our communities are within one district? And that includes not just municipalities, but also um, land grants. And then furthermore, how do we try to respect some of our school boards? Education is a very important thing. I think our school boards are very, very critical. And they're critical partners towards anything that we try to do in terms of progress, whether it's economic development, whether it's bringing educational programs to, to our schools. I think that we're better served when we respect our school district lines as much as possible. So, with that in mind, I had already done quite a bit of research and, and kind of had an idea of how I, how I thought the map might, might look. And sure enough, Plan B was a map that, that I thought very highly of. I thought very highly of. And you can see there's a stark difference. Plan A was, was a plan that uh, all of the about half of the plans kind of worked around Plan A and half of the plans worked around Plan B. Plan A maintains um, maintains a dividing line between two districts in Moriarty and also it divides Estancia. So that map, Plan A, and all of its other sort of you know offshoots just crumple them up and toss them. That ain't gonna work for me. I didn't like them for that reason because it, it didn't unify the community. It, it split them. That's, that's chaotic. That's just, we're talking about population and precincts there. We're not talking about communities. We're not talking about better representation. So Plan D, if you look at Plan D, we have a situation there where every municipality and every land grant is fully within one district. At the same time, we were able to preserve school districts pretty well. Um, you see there that Edgewood, the Edgewood area is in one. Then you have Moriarty in one. Then you have McIntosh in one. Then you have Estancia, Tapique, Torreon, and Ewing in one. Then you have Manzano, Puntariagua, Ajo, Mountain Air, Willard, Duran, Encino, and Kinds Corners in one. Kinds Corners. I like that. I like that very much because I think that uh, that dispels any notion of north versus south. To have a commissioner who represents both Mount Nair and all the way up to Pines Corners, it really eliminates that. We don't have to worry about that anymore. We have uh, McIntosh, uh, two districts in the very center of the county. Um, Moriarty is in one district. Edgewood is also in one district. That, that really changes the underpinnings of how power is distributed in the county. And it leads to it leads to a change in how representation is calculated. And that's what I'm aiming for. I want to change. I want to change. I don't want to preserve any vestige of the existing system. I want to bring in a new system that ushers in change. That's, that's what I'm 
That's what I want to see. And I think that uh, Plan B is, is it's, uh, it's a great plan. I think it's a great plan. So uh, in our workshops, Plan B needed some adjustment because Commissioner Ducharme also had some concerns. She shared my interest in unifying communities and she perceived in the original version in Plan B that there were some communities in the Northern District that were not unified. And so we went through a series of D1 and D2 in order to achieve the changes that Commissioner Ducharme identified. So Plan B2, which we're <coughs> kind of reviewing there, is the final version that incorporates the changes uh, that Commissioner Ducharme um, was interested in, namely a more unified Macintosh and also a more unified Sweetwater Hills with Moriarty. Now, I'll remind you that this is not a map that will be adopted per se. This is an idea. An idea. We're still going to have a public hearing. We're still going to take input on it. We, we need input on it. We want input on it. If we need to move lines around here and there, we can do that. But what I want to present to you here is an idea, a vision of how I think the Commission District should work. And I want to underline the fact that nobody is wedded to this plan. The current Commission is not wedded to this plan. The plan is a living document insofar as we have not adopted an ordinance yet, and no map is in place. So look at the map, think about it, and, and see what you think. You know, everybody has his own considerations to make, so we're, we'll be very interested to, to, to hear more about it. More, more will, there'll be more discussion about it naturally. But uh, I think that uh, Plan D2 is, is a good plan. You keep saying, I, I, I. How do you follow commissioners feel about this? Commissioner Ducharme has endorsed uh, Plan D2 as a plan that we would present uh, to the greater public. Um, Commissioner Frost, the reason I'm here before you today is because uh, Commissioner Frost at our last meeting uh, voiced the opinion that he was not in favor, no longer in favor of a five-member board. And I think that a five-member board is absolutely necessary. So I would like to demonstrate that there is support for this issue, that there is support for this issue amongst the greater public, which there naturally is. Um, and so in order to demonstrate that to Commissioner Frost, I believe I would like to, to garner the support of the municipalities and the land grants across the community for the idea of a five-member board, not a, not the, not a map, the five-member board, the expansion to a five-member board, the increased representation. That's that's my interest, and that's why I'm here before you today, because I think that Commissioner Frost knows very well that he can derail this whole issue by abstaining or voting no um, on the matter. But I think that it's that it's unfair for for one vote to hold up the entire thing, especially when the commissioner has has voiced has voiced support for it in the past, voted yes on the initial notice of intent, and also um, proceeded to give directive to the county to spend money on, on the contract to do the redistricting. Why? Mike, that's my question. Why why hold it up now? Why have we been working on this since February? Since February we've been breaking our heads over this thing. Why hold it up now in September? At the end of September, why hold this up? Now, when I asked the question, Commissioner Frost, you can hear the minutes, he made a motion to adjourn the meeting rather than answer the question. I don't know why. I don't know why. I don't know why he, he would uh, not want to support it. I think a five-member board uh, is, is a very good thing. Now, if you look at the brochure that I, gave, that I passed out there, you can see... Uh, there's a, there's a welcome message on one page. There's specific benefits. I want to talk to you a little bit about the misconceptions. The misconceptions are, there's some red, there's some red, uh, this title in red, the misconceptions, okay? One that's, that's, uh, one that's floating around is that there isn't enough money. And the second one is, 
It'd be better to add staff within departments than fund salaries for additional policymakers. In other words, why would you spend money on two additional people to just sit at a desk for a meeting when you could hire more deputies, when you could hire more road department folks, you could hire, you could buy equipment? So the first one, there isn't enough money. So a commissioner makes $27,570. That is the base salary. Now, fully loaded with insurance and all, the max that a commissioner could make would be $42,873. So if you multiply that times two, it costs about $85,000 a year. So where all the money come from? The money is allocated in the Torrance County budget. It's allocated today. It is allocated. It has uh, been allocated from the payment and of taxes that the county receives from the windfalls. Now, this is not broken the county. The county still has $210,000 in the bill. There's still upwards of $350,000 in our capital outlay fund. This is not broken the county in any way, shape, or form. How many is that? How many is that? And this is after detention costs. This is after. This is after. So the money is there. Not only is it there, but it's allocated. And furthermore, an odd twist to this whole story is that uh, at our last meeting we voted to allocate the funds, and the vote was unanimous. The vote was unanimous to, uh, to actually allocate the funds. I don't know what that signifies on behalf of uh, our, our district one commissioner, but it's interesting. The second, the second misconception is that it would be better to add staff within departments than fund salaries for two additional policy policymakers. I think this is a false opportunity cost. That that we would say that someone might might say a five-member board is is a bad idea because you could add road department, uh, more people to the road department, or more deputies. It doesn't hold true to the pattern of support that the county commission has rendered to departments within the county. So recently, within the last six months, we moved to start our road department employees at $12 an hour. They were making nine. The idea is to give some of our young people a chance to come in and build a career within the county. To not utilize the county as a stepping stone, to be a home, to be a place where a person can pursue a career and earn a, a living wage, earn a living wage for their family. So we decided to increase the rate to $12. It's been six months. We don't know if that's going to uh, end up. Uh, we don't know the benefits. It's hard to measure the benefits after six months, but we haven't let, nobody has quit that has started in six months, which is a good indication. At the same time, additional staff positions have been allocated to the assessor's office and to the treasurer's office at their, at their request. I'm of the opinion that you can't ever ask an employee to do more with less. They have to have adequate tools. They have to have adequate staff. They have to have adequate capacity in order to carry out their goal. So we allocated staff. We allocated staff. Too. By the same token, the manager's office has seen an expansion. An operations manager was just hired. A human resources person was just hired. Somebody dedicated. Can you believe the county has been operating for years without a dedicated human resources person? Now we have a, hum a, de a dedicated human resources person at the county. That is very helpful to the county. That is very helpful, needless to say. At the same token, four additional deputies were added to the to the TCSO. Um, the Torrance County Fire Department is about to purchase a building in Estancia. There's no lack of funds. To say there's no request before us that is being turned aside in order to favor the addition of, of two more commissioners doesn't exist. I've had conversations with our department heads to ask them, are you operating at capacity? What can we do to help you? What are your needs? And it's been a resounding, we're doing well. We're doing well. We've granted everything this fiscal year that we've asked for. Let us proceed to next fiscal year, we might have some needs. But we also have more money in the bill if we need to, if we need to purchase equipment, if we need to, there's options. The county is open to options. The five member board is one of those options. We can't say that there isn't enough money and that there's a department that's going to be left in the cold. That's not the case. Two questions that I have. Uh, who, have you went to other municipalities yet? Has anyone else voted, or are we the first to vote? No, uh, Willard has elected to support as well as the Tapique Lander. Yeah. 
And then also, I mean, we have an election less than a month away. Who's going to find it? Who's going to vote? Like, is this something that has to pass with the current commission, or is this something that would happen with the new with the new commission? So, <clears throat> there's a draft. I took the liberty of, of, of drafting a, a proclamation that might be amenable to, to you. And, and you can please uh, pass this around. Now, the, the proclamation is, is very is very simple. It says, for as Article 10, State Statute 7 of the New Mexico State Constitution provides that a board of county commissioners by unanimous vote may adopt an ordinance to increase the size of a board of county commissioners to five members, <coughs> and whereas the board of Torrance County Commissioners is considering such an ordinance, and whereas the blank feels that such an increase in the size of the Board of County Commissioners will increase countywide levels of representation. Now, therefore, blank does hereby proclaim its support of one Torrance County Resolution 2018-13, which is that original resolution that kicked us off. In other words, that saying, Commissioners, stay true to the original vote that you made. Stay unanimous on this issue. Stay united on it. And number two, increasing the size of the Board of County Commissioners of Torrance County to five members. And I think that this proclamation is generic enough. It's not committing uh, the town to any particular map. It's not committing the town to any particular set of circumstances. It's just proclaiming support for the expansion of the Torrance County Board of Commissioners from three members to five members, which is my intent um, solely. Um, if granted, if approved, such a proclamation would be used in order to demonstrate, in order to demonstrate the unanimity of support for such a move, which is great. If we want to, if we want change, I don't think there's any, there's no, I don't think there's any gray area. This is not a, a black, this is a very black and white issue. If you're for the status quo, if you're for what's been happening here in Torrance County, if you're for the status quo, then we need to stay with a three member board. But if you're for change, if you're for progress, then I think a five member board is necessary. There's not, a certainty here. There's not a certainty of anything. There is only an opportunity. And I think the opportunity is a very good one. I think we have a, a tremendous possibility to be able to, to, to pass this if we show that we're united, that we have the unanimity, that the unanimity that is being um, splintered by the city commissioner actually exists in the public. That's that's really what we're trying to, to demonstrate. And that will go a long ways, I think, in, in, in helping us to, to move forward on this matter. I'd also like to, to touch on a, a specific benefit. Um, I think having five members increases the likelihood of having broader diversity of views and skill sets. So having different members on the board will allow us to, to be able to express and bring to the table a variety of skill sets and a, a more diverse background, which will, which will really strengthen the board. And also, a better distribution of workload will exist in that a five-member board allows for the creation of subcommittees to look at specific issues, to research, conduct research. And since I have been there, the one thing I can say that Sherlock Holmes would have been the best commissioner ever, because research is critical. Research is critical. You can't just take things for granted. You can't just take what people tell you. You have to be able to conduct research. You need to be able to look at issues. And to be able to have somebody to partner with to create a subcommittee to look at a particular issue, to conduct the legwork in order to make progress happen, it requires more than three. It requires more than three. Um, by the same token, greater efficiency and opportunity for discussions between commissioners. Right now, we, we can't, commissioners can't speak to each other because it's an automatically a forum. That hampers us because other Frankly, I'll put it frankly, other people utilize that in order to get, try to get into our ears. 
they try to create more suspicion, try to polarize the issues. It, it keeps us from working, to, from trying to work together and reaching out across the aisle. Because when we have our meetings, that's the only time we see each other. And oftentimes, the very forces who would put pressure for a certain particular viewpoint are in the audience, expecting that move from their commissioner. And we were left without defense. It hampers us. It hampers us. I think there's also better accessibility for residents. With a five-member board, your commissioner is close to home. If you're, uh, if you're in Duran, your commissioner is in Mount there. Let's say. If you're in Torreon, your commissioner is somewhere around there. Your commissioner is able to focus on the issues that are close to home because where they live is home. Where they represent is home. See what I'm saying? I think it, it really it really shortens that that connect that connection between the commissioner and the resident. I think there's also ease of operation on difficult and controversial issues. Having more perspective gives us better, a wider scope with which to deal with 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 difficult issues. Difficult issues. So I, overall, I just think. Uh, if you look at our neighbors, <laughs> all of our neighbors are, are five-member boards. As far as population goes, probably the county closest to us is Socorro County. They have a five-member board. Um, Lincoln County has a five-member board. All of our neighbors have moved through. Nobody has ever moved from a five-member board to a three-member board. Nobody has said, we've got five members, we can't get it done, let's go back to three. Nobody has said that in the history of New Mexico. Nobody has said that. I think. Moving to a five-member board is a very forward way of looking at, at how we can progress the county. I think it's it's the bedrock. It's the bedrock for bringing progress and change to, to, to how our government works, how our government benefits the community. Um, it is the bedrock. I don't see uh, I see things being very difficult uh, in the three-member three board, and I, I would hope and I believe that the five-member board will be a tremendous benefit to the entire county. Do you have any questions? The only question is, uh, would you say uh, the three member, that's, that's two and like yourself, that's right. it? Right. And five would be a sports four and yourself. That's correct. Right. So let's say like you approve D2, like so you guys would automatically choose a so you would no longer be our commissioner, or would you stay our commissioner? Like how did, or that's all hasn't been ironed out yet. That's so the process. Let's say, let's say that that uh, that the five member board, the ordinance is approved. Well, then if it's done with the current commission, then what could happen? You'd have to implement that ordinance one of two ways. Either one, the governor would appoint. So where is the the governor? whether it's the current governor or an incoming governor, that governor would appoint the two commissioners for, for the, the two districts that would be adopted and would be brought in. And they would serve until 2020, and then they would have to run. Or the county could continue with a three-member board until 2020 and have elections. Have it implemented in 2020. If you want to implement it now, you have to have the governor appoint. In other words, the county would take nominations, letters, and then the commission would nominate uh, some people, some names, and the governor would make the decision. If if you if you want to have the people elect them, then you have to live with a three-member board until the 2020 election. So I would I would see that this proclamation would 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 be used in, in two ways. So number one, it would. Try to, it would demonstrate unanimity for this issue, support for this issue to the current commission. But let's say that the current commissioner gets well within the bounds to say, well, I still don't support that. I don't care who, who supports it. If they're, if they're both known, then my intention would be to say, well, wait a minute, just because one commissioner voted no doesn't mean that the issue is dead because there's support for it. Look at all these problems. How can we turn away from it? And then we would turn to our incoming commissioners who would come in and say, well, you know what, gentlemen, there's there's support for this issue. Let's put it on the ballot and let the, pe let the people decide in the room. 
So the proclamation would, would, uh, would kind of cut in two directions. And the intent would be to not let the issue die, but to move the issue forward in one fashion or another. What I don't want is for uh, a small group of, at our last meeting, at our last meeting, a gentleman got up and, and uh, said, you know what, I, we don't, I don't think that this is a good idea. I think this is a bad idea. And there's a certain group of people that I'm speaking for that aren't here today. And he said the names. You, you can look at the minutes if you'd like. And, and Jim Frost verbatim said that he had been worked on by a group of people and that he was going to vote no on this matter. That doesn't smack of American liberty to me. That a small group of people would influence is not yet. We need to let the people decide. And so I think uh, if you're able to, to, to support this proclamation, I think uh, the people can be represented one of two ways. Either by a unanimous vote by the county commission, we represent the people, or a vote. Think about it. But this proclamation would be, the intent would be either way. The intent is to allow the people to have a voice in this discussion. That's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to wedge the voice of the county. What happens if you don't get the proclamation from all the municipalities? Then it makes it more difficult for me to demonstrate unanimity, but not impossible, because I believe that if our municipalities support, render their support of this matter, it's not taken to be taken lightly by me nor by any of the commissioners. That the town of Mountain Air would, would vote uh, would, would support this issue, and maybe another municipality doesn't, well, that doesn't make the issue any less important. That doesn't make the, any, the issue any less important to any degree. So I think issuing a proclamation of support will better allow the county to be able to keep the issue alive and at least put it on the ballot for next year if the current commission doesn't want to doesn't want to vote yes. But if, if we don't get, it doesn't matter. I'm I, I'm going to continue. I feel very passionately about the issue. I think it's very important. And if, if, if a particular community chooses to vote no, they're entitled to vote no. They're entitled to say we don't support them the issue. But I want them to be as informed as possible. That's why I've taken some time to try to give you as much information as I can about it. Um, I think it's very important, and I would hope that everybody would support it. I can't see why anybody wouldn't support it. To be quite, to be quite honest, I've, I've thought about why wouldn't anybody support this? Why wouldn't anybody? The money is there. I can't understand why anybody wouldn't support it. I can't fathom it. So I just want to clarify one thing. I didn't actually put, and there may have been miscommunication between me and Dennis, but I didn't put a proclamation as an agenda item. So if it's, if it's approved tonight, we can submit, or give you a letter until the next meeting and then we'll give you an actual proclamation at that point. So tonight wouldn't be an actual proclamation because I didn't put it as such. And But if we vote tonight, we can vote. If it is allowed to vote on it as a proclamation, then we would do a proclamation. But I'm trying to get, that's what I've been messaging. I haven't been trying to like, you know, ignore you or nothing, but I'm trying to get with Town with Clerk with Dennis Hover to see it, um, if we can approve the proclamation tonight. But I don't think that we can. But we can give you a letter of support if you guys choose to. But is there any other questions? A letter of support would probably work. So a proclamation would lend some standardization to right. the message that we want to... And if we do a letter of support, we would do it at the next meeting, we would give you an actual proclamation, which wouldn't probably help you with, with Mr. Frost, but would help you with the new commissioners coming in. Well, there, there's plenty of time. I mean, if you need to, if you need to, if you want to issue a proclamation, you can, next meeting would... Yeah, November 13th would be the day. So another question. You uh, you mentioned Frost yourself. Who's the other commissioner? Commissioner Julia Duchamp. All right. And uh, second part of that question is you are kind of commissioner for Torrance County. I, I saw the I saw the proposed maps, but what are the other counties you represent us? And what where, who does Frost represent? Where where does he where's he at? Where's he? 
So right now, Torrance County, is, it has three different commission districts. Okay. So District 1 goes, there's a map here. District 1 includes uh, half of Moriarty, part of Edgewood, and a little part of, of McIntosh. District 2 is the other half of Moriarty, the other part of McIntosh, and goes down to Encino. And then <coughs> District 3 is the rest. Okay. And uh, Frost has opposition to it. Have, are you allowed to go and speak at, at uh, in, you know, over at this territory? Are you allowed to go to the count, you know, to, uh, city council meetings in those areas and, you know, give your spill as to why you think it would be good? Are, are, are you doing that if you are allowed? Absolutely. You are allowed and you are? Good. Um, do, you, do you foresee any... Why he would uh, why he would oppose it is is it monies? Is it uh, afraid he'll lose some of the pie? I mean, it, it, you got to have some sort of insight to this. I don't see a bad reason for it. Um, one of the things is uh, Ducharme and and Frost are out. Uh, they they got uh, beat in the primary, so they we are guaranteed two new commissioners from District One and District Two. This is a current map. So they're already, they're already on the way out then. They're on their way out, correct? Yeah. yeah. They, uh, they lost their primaries, um, so they are both out. So, so I think, like, when you, I'm just saying that because you made reference, is he going to cut his, you know, yeah, yeah. He, he's not going to have a piece of the fight because he's out. So, in fact, this might benefit him because then he could run for, for another, I don't know, I don't know. <laughs> I hadn't quite thought about it that way. <laughs> 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 yeah, so it doesn't make any sense to why he would uh, not do it now and on the way out because he doesn't. It sounds like there should be some way, because even if he doesn't run, you're going to have that group of people who will be trying to influence <laughs> the new ones or whatever. And they're not saying what makes them opposed to it. it sounds disingenuous. There must be a way to cause, encourage, force something, a forum, a debate. I feel like we're hearing one side of the story. If there's people in a group that are against it, I would not want to vote for or against without hearing what they have to say. And if they say nothing, well, then they don't have a reason. But surely they have something that makes them think they don't want it. And we're not hearing that. And maybe you're not hearing it, so you can't tell us. But there has to be a full expression of pros and cons before somebody can say, yes, I endorse it, or no, I don't. I wouldn't speculate as to as to why and why anyone would be opposed to it, because I haven't received an answer. I posed the question, I'm black, you can look at the minutes. I asked, I engaged. I asked, why would you be against this? You already <coughs> allocated the money. You can't say that no more. You can't say there's no money. Why are you against this? The person that I was engaging left me talking, walked out the out of the out of the building. And Commissioner Frost made a motion to adjourn the meeting. What's the reasons that you're getting from people that oppose it in meetings? Do money. They, money? But that's, that's, they're afraid that the customer money, but yet the money's already there. Well, you know, there's a there's <coughs> old saying, there's always a good reason why people do things, and then there's a real reason. Now, I won't, I won't conjecture as to why anybody would be against this. I can't do that, because that would inject a level of negativity and pessimism that would that would be inappropriate. I believe in being optimistic. I believe in looking at the good side of things. So I'm going to talk about the good parts about level five number four. I can you can you can look at the record, you can look at minutes, you can talk to whoever you need to talk to and you can you can find out what you perceive the real reason to be. Another question I have is um like you mentioned Socorro County they have five member they do have a five member board. They, that's one of our neighboring counties. Have you talked to those members or that commissioner down there? Any commissioner down there is, is for um, for bullet points that, were, um, that would help you in your in your quest to get five here. To say that you know you, when you go back to your meeting, you can say I've spoken with Socorro, I've spoken with Lee County, Chavez County, whatever it is and down there. <coughs> and these counties that have five members uh, find it's beneficial for them to have five for, for these reasons and bring that back over here as a as arguing points for yourself. Have you done? Have you thought about something like that? I, have. I don't. I don't see why why we wouldn't. Uh, like Mr. Lima says, there's always another position. There's always another point of view. But I have inquired. I can't see it right now. I have inquired, and, and to be quite honest with you, 
there hasn't been resistance. Once other counties, when they pass their notice of intent, they just proceed along the path and get it done. There's not this waffling around at the end that turns it into a political football and everybody has a, that's a quite classic Torrance County, I'd say, but, <laughs> but uh, I mean, that's just, this is not a pattern that, that is, I mean, when we've had our meetings at our workshops, uh, the, the gentleman from, even from research and polling is, is shocked because he's trying to talk about maps and there's still, there's still opposition to the very idea in the room. It's like, why would you guys have entered into a contract and had all this gone all to all this if you guys are going to be against it? What's wrong with you guys? That's what they feel like telling us. You guys are crazy. Um, so I got clarification from uh, Dennis's mentor. A proclamation is done by the mayor and doesn't actually need council approval, but I would obviously go by your, your approval here tonight. So, and then, so if you guys approve um, us going forward, you know, approving the town position, then I would do the proclamation. Well, one of the things I see as for approving is Looking at the looking at our map of a curve, man, it would just seem like it does bode well for the for Torrance County in the purple, I think, right? Purple to uh to have a the purple and the green, which will absorb the bulk of you know of uh, of your commissioners, having do having that much area to work with versus Mac and Josh Moriarty, it seems like um uh, like getting a little help for for you. You might get deals that go out to the public. I think it'd be better. You know what I mean? I mean, if, if we got somebody helping us with our with our county that's allocating funds like you talk about, you can give another point of view. And let's, I like, like you said, let's, there's just something that, that we don't see. I, I don't see the, I don't see the downside of getting more help. Are you, is your opposition from the smaller, uh, from the smaller areas that so far? The opposition is generally in. In districts one and two, that that has come out publicly at meeting. I'm sure there's there's opposition everywhere, but maybe there's up. I don't know. I couldn't say. All I can say is to what I witnessed in meetings and what the record bears out, and that's what the record bears out. Because your only access to their comments is in these meetings. If right. they don't say it in the meeting, you, you can't get that information uh, legitimately. That's correct. Right. Things on or their opinion or no, I uh, it was thought about that, it's, especially since two commissioners, uh, since two commissioners are for this now, but only one is one is opposed. It was suggested. Well, you know what? Just go ahead and put it on the county website and go ahead and put county. Letter. You'll notice that all of this material doesn't have any county letterhead or any county contacts or any of that. And, and my thought was, well, you know what? Commissioner Ducharme is entitled to his position. He represents uh, a third of this county, and he's entitled. If he if he figures that knows the right way to go, then he's entitled to that position. So I would I I don't I didn't want to put the county in the middle. You'll notice that this brochure is not from the county; it's from me. Uh, this issue is so important that I I I'm willing to attach myself to it. It's not the county that's pushing this. Um, it's two commissioners. Any other questions? Not that I have concerns over it, but I feel as a council we should not say for or con against it because they are part of that county and to me it's going to fall on us to do the, uh, to say yes or no to to back it up, which I feel the people of the county, which are you people, they should have a voice into what we say, even if it's an open meeting at the county meeting where they can voice their opinion, or if like a public meeting, even if a public meeting was here, which we don't get but the same people all the time, but I think the public needs to have an input. It's their, it's their county, they're paying taxes on this. It shouldn't be up to us to say yes for it, no for it, or whichever way we're gonna vote. I think the people, the public needs to have a voice in what they feel that this county should be, I mean, should be divided. That's not my opinion, I don't know what the other's opinion is. That's an interesting point because uh, 
I can understand that completely. Uh, however, it was very interesting to me about that that uh, that uh, point that was made there is that if, <laughs> if if you choose to withdraw support for the proclamation or to say that we don't support the issue, to not come out publicly in support of the issue, then it will abet those who want to render the people of the county voiceless. It will abet that position. The very opposite of your intention is what you'll be abetting if you if you uh, if you decide to to withdraw support for it, which is which is fine. But I wanted to be clear that if if you're not in support of it, then, then you're in support of a three-member board because that's what it's come to. See, the opposition feels that it's just because Jim's going to vote no on it, they've killed it. They've killed it. It's over. It's not going to ever come out into the public discourse. It's done. There won't be a vote. It'll never get on the ballot. It'll, nothing will ever happen. It'll be, just be quietly done, and nobody will get a voice. Just because Jim votes no, it's, it's over. And what I'm saying is no. We need the people to have a voice. I'm, I'm thinking just what you're, what you're thinking there. The people need to have a voice. Just because Jim says no or because a certain group of people, and you can look at the minutes and figure who they are. Just because they say no doesn't mean no. The people need to decide. Now, we are elected to be leaders. Sometimes the positions that we need to take require courage. Sometimes they require boldness. A lot of times they require leadership. That's what leadership is to me. So I, that's why I'm willing to attach my name to this because I feel that it's important. And because I feel it's important just because somebody says no, doesn't mean that it's over. We need to, if you feel that this is a good thing, if you feel that you want the people to have a voice in determining whether a five member board is adopted, then the proclamation is the right way to go. I just want to make that, make that very obvious and very clear that if you choose to remain silent on the matter, it only abets those who would render the county residents voiceless. I just want to put my position out there. I, I support the five-member board, and the reason why I do is because, um, number one, I feel that we are, the South is ignored. We, the Southern part is ignored. I, I strongly believe that, um, if every five or might be. Number two, we are technically, a, like, well, we're a five-member board, but, you know, four, and then I break the tie. There's a, situations that come up that I need to talk to Richard with, with, with uh, make, you know, with Public Works, or, you know, with, with Ernie, or with you, or with Adrian, with the police department. And with the three counties, you can't do that with the three members. You, the, the minute you talk to somebody else, you're done. That's that's the forum. Mm -hmm. So when you have the five-member board, you can at least talk to someone else. You can at least reach out to another commissioner for for their opinions. You can create that dialogue, you know, externally, and then bring it into the into the actual meeting itself. So I mean, I don't know. To me, I we're represented by a five-member board, and we have a population of 900. So population really, to me, doesn't even matter. It really matters if, like he said, you have one person opposing it or the 2-1 game. Now that can still exist. We, there was a council not so long ago that it was a 2-3 nonstop. Every, every vote was a 2-3. But still, there's greater, greater um, opportunity for communication and for discussion, I think. So that's why I support it. Um, it may come down to a tie tonight, I don't know, but uh, I just wanted to throw it out. I support it as well. I, 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 I mean, it's, as far as he's just asking my opinion. And I support it as well, and I, I think if anybody was against it, then you have your chance to go to the county commissioner, to the county meetings, to the county commission meetings, and voice yourself there. Um, like you said, it's sometimes when you're on the board, you're, you speak for your community, but just in a, in a broad sense, not, not, not directly. Again, somebody here is Mr. Dimas, he's, he kind of made, a, he kind of made a, the opposing point. But he also, he also can go just like I could, like anybody else could, to one of those meetings and then, then I think it's just governance. I think, I think he's asking for a chance to get a better body for for our county. I, I, I would support it for that, for, for the exact reasons Peter said. Again, you can always change your mind when you hear the opposing view, and, and then he wants, to, and then they want to vote on it if there's other questions. There's still another. There's still another step. We have to have a public hearing, and that's where we discuss maps. We discuss all aspects of this again. There's still a public hearing. And there's where the public voice to come more out for other than rent. I would support it tonight here. I wouldn't, I wouldn't have any worries of whether or not my voice said I was for it tonight, and some of them weren't. So I wouldn't. I wouldn't. Can we put that in a formal motion? 
Yes, I'm willing to make a motion to uh, support. Uh, how was how are we going to win it here? Support uh, the, the, the town's position. The town's position? Yep. Okay, to support the town's position. In favor of the five In favor of the five member county commission board. Okay. okay. I have a motion on the board to approve the town position on the for a five member town, county commission board uh, by Ernie and second by Richard or Paul Richard. Four. Juanita. Four. Uh, uh, Ernie. Four. Motion passes. We have the down to four. Well, not that I was against the way I <laughs> it, was yeah. it was just, yeah. I, I feel that it needs public input. It should be just. Up to us. You're really voting in favor of exploring. Right? Yes. 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 Perfect. So, and, and I'll do the uh, the proclamation. So we'll get that to you. Perfect. Good luck. Good luck. All right. Is that the old both ways? Snow Garner on inside. <laughs> <laughs> All right, moving on. Department head reports, please. Department Chief Juan Reyes. traffic stops recently in this time period issued 10 citations we gave some warning notice for the first time offenders so they can get used to the enforcement additionally officers we be glad to hear this we have not received any burglary reports so burglaries are down and it's going to get even better as of this date We've arrested four felony suspects this month. One of these suspects was a subject that was wanted by various law enforcement agencies in the area, which resulted in a foot chase through the town, my first foot chase. Uh, subject was captured without incident and booked into custody. Today we had a vehicle pursuit of a female, and where two small children were in the vehicle, the driver was arrested and charged with felony child abuse and we were assisted by Torrance County Sheriff's Department. Additional charges were filed on this driver, and it's pending a, a warrant of arrest, and it's being reviewed by the District Attorney's Office from escape custody from the peace officer. We responded to approximately six domestic violent type calls. No arrests were made, and there were no injuries to report. So they weren't actually they're just verbal disputes, as, as we call them. Officers have responded to two motor vehicle crashes, one on private property, no enforcement action taken. I want to let everybody know that if you do get in an accident and it happens on private property, you can exchange information. You do not need us. If it's on the roadway, then we have to respond. 
in this situation, <coughs> drivers exchange information for, uh, and we ensure that they have license, registration, and insurance. With that said, they report it to your to their insurance company, and it's handled by the insurance company. You don't have to get involved. That's a better way of tying up uh, resources. Uh, additionally, uh, officers have issued several non-traffic citations for minor criminal violations, meaning there are certain crimes that we can issue you a citation, what we call an NTC. That prevents from the officer having to make the two-hour drive up to Santa Fe, booking, and by the time they get back into town, you've already worked half your shift just up there in Santa Fe. By issuing these non-traffic citations, it expedites. The person goes to court still, they're still responsible, but we stay in town. And that way we're able to respond for what we need to do. Uh, one civil standby was reported. We also took two felony reports on child abuse, which is under investigation by CYFD in the DA's office. And with that investigation, it's what the subject got arrested for. That's how we found that the subject was wanted uh, for other felonies. Our animal control officer responded to several calls for animal control violations within the town and has taken appropriate action. Uh, the code enforcement uh, action on Highway 60 in Wilson uh, for the donation of the property, which has been tabled, that was also part of its duties. So at this time, with all this information, it, it just, I think it flows better and it keeps everybody's privacy intact. Nobody gets mad and nobody, I mean, where it does get around, so everybody knows who's the who, but it, uh, just to keep it and to respect those individuals' uh, privacy. I think this is the best way to present this uh, statistical data to the board and, and to the public, and that way it stays in line and we don't get in trouble with anybody. Any questions on this? Nobody's got any questions? That's pretty good then. Well, an example have, of, an, of an NTC, non-traffic? A non-traffic citation, sir, is um, certain crimes in the state statute we can arrest. We can pretty much arrest for anything. If, if you don't know, it's when you get stopped by the police and you get issued a traffic citation, that is an actual arrest. That is considered an arrest. By us giving you a citation and telling you that you need to appear in court, and you promise by signing that you're going to go to court, we're actually releasing you from custody because on your signature. So when you don't appear, you do a failure to appear, and that's when the judge issues a warrant. So any, any type of criminal action that we have, like for instance, uh, a larceny. Say a guy goes to the 7-Eleven or to one of the stores and steals something. We capture him, the person's there and we issue an NTC. Violation has occurred, the subject's been cited, he's actually been arrested, and he's being released, and now he's gotta to go to court. That's an example of an NTC. We don't have to take that individual all the way to Santa Fe to book him on a $100 charge or a $50 charge. So it's saving us staying here, saving wear and tear on our cars, saving gas. That's why we're doing the NTCs. Not all of criminal violations are, are falling to that category, so we have to be very picky. There are some arrests that we do have to take the subject into custody. If they're violent, they're causing a disturbance that is really bad, then we're not going to give them an NTC. We are actually going to take that person into physical custody and take them up to Santa Fe and book them. Those are just some examples. We're real, we call them petty misdemeanors, but really low grade. When you start getting into your misdemeanors and your felonies, well, we cannot cite NTC. It's only for petty misdemeanors. Thank you. Any questions? Everybody happy? <laughs> well, with this presentation, I mean, that's that's what I have for today. And um, this is going to be the, the monthly reporting on that way we keep everybody informed. And like I said, if anybody has any questions, Feel free to drop by the station. I'm usually there, at least I try to be. We're still under construction. It's looking really, really sharp. Major difference. 
Maybe you're we'll be surprised. You actually have a chief uh, office now? <laughs> I got an office. Like office. <laughs> um, we have workstations. It's coming out great. Um, we're going to be doing the camera soon. Everything is going good. Uh, we hooked up gas to it today, correct? Yes. Thank you very much. Yes. And we hooked up gas to this <laughs> building <laughs> as well. Yes. So. We're, very, we're very proud and we're very proud that the town council and everybody's approved us and helped uh, set us up. There's a lot of changes coming still through, but like I said, when it's all said and done, you will be amazed at what you're looking at. You really will. Wow. And, I, and I couldn't have done it without the board's help and, and for the public. So I really appreciate your support. We got some uh, police uh, praise from uh, an individual that we normally don't get praise from. That's the reason for the snow outside. So <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, been a, it's been a great week. Yes, it has. I was, I was shocked myself when, when I told the mayor that. He was like, what? <laughs> You actually praised us and said, yeah, you guys are doing a good job. You're up there. Now, um, just so everyone is aware, I, I put it out on Facebook. You guys should have got an email from Dennis. Uh, Shana did um, resign her position, so yes, we sir. no longer have an SRO at the school. Um, we will be going out, looking at the apps that we have currently, and uh, looking at what, what we can do to fix that. So, um, the only request that I made is I, I do want uh, Superintendent Don Apodaca to be involved in the hiring process. Um, being that they pay half, it's only fitting that I think that she should be part of the interview and all that kind of stuff. So um, we've yet to determine. I don't know if we're going to do it publicly or not, but, but we will. We will get on it when we were on it. We really need to get another officer, anyways. Yes. So we're lacking two positions, and we really need to get on both of those. So. Yeah. I have had some good um, uh, applicants. Uh, Non-certified and certified, so they're treated a little bit different salary-wise, benefit-wise, and Mayor and I have discussed that. And in order to recruit, you sometimes are going to have to give a little bit more and so forth. But we have some good applicants and that, uh, that we're looking at, and uh, going to get ready to set up a, uh, some interviews. And the SRO is, is probably going to be the hardest position because it requires a specialization to be certified as an SRO. Uh, it's a nationwide certification. But if we can find an excellent candidate, if we can progress and move on and get them certified, then we're on the right track. And just for the record, I am stating publicly that this administration will have a contract in place when we send someone to the academy. Because now I know what you feel like. Yes. I get that feeling. It, it's very upsetting to me. <laughs> so, we will have a contract. If it's a non-certified, they will be under contract. If they leave early, they will be paid early. So, they will be paying off. What yes, what because I've been sitting here many years, and my dad tells me, don't vote for them. They change it. How many people, how many individuals have we sent to the academy and they sit right here in front of us and say, this is my home, mm -hmm. I'm going to stay here, I own property, and as soon as they get that bill paper from Santa Fe, it's adios, goodbye. <laughs> and I'm to put it in on the record, if a non-certified staff comes before this board, it's going to be no, it doesn't matter who it is. I'm tired of sending them to the academy, and it's adios, goodbye. And I have told uh, Mr. Mayor here. <laughs> Well, with that said, <laughs> let me give you some information. On that. <laughs> we have research. I have researched that for you, and I agree. Like the uh, Mr. Commissioner said, is research. That's how you get information. Training provided by the Law Enforcement Academy is actually free. They don't charge. What we pay for is we pay for the benefits, we pay for their salary, and we pay for the meals. But the training itself is part of, under the state law, that they're required to train officers. The contract, in, in, in what we're talking about, it, it would bind an individual. Is it legally enforceable? Yes. Some say no, some, some say it doesn't work. There's been many, many agencies that have tried, <coughs> but the thing is, is they've never pursued it. Well, we can actually charge to keep an officer. We can't force somebody and say, you're going to stay here for two years. But we can hold them accountable for the money we spend on uniforms and equipment and any advanced training thereof other than the basic training. That's what we can hold them accountable because that becomes a civil. Now it's, it's not, and a lot of people misunderstand that and say, 
well, you can't hold them, you, you can't do that. And I agree with you. A lot of people look for agencies such as our, our agency and they want that paper so they can stay six months a year and we're a stepping stone, they're gone. Yes. Mm -hmm. Well, hopefully that we get good candidates that will not do that. And once we present the contract to them, if they're still interested and they're serious about their profession, then they'll stay. Just like the county commissioner said, we got to recruit people from within. We got to, we got to train them. We got to show them, hey, this is a career. This is not just a job. This is a career, and this town is giving you an opportunity. So, why not use it? I mean, you know, I like to see youngsters from this community apply to to be police officers, but we're limited because. It's such a small area, and most everybody has moved out. As soon as they get in from high school, they bail. They take off. They want to go to the big cities, or they want more action, as I've been told. Mm -hmm. Officers want that big action. <laughs> well, we can't hold them to that, but we sure as heck can hold them mm -hmm. to what we are going to expand as a town. And it's not cheap, let me tell you. Just a vest alone for an officer is custom fitted because it has to fit you runs anywhere from eight to a thousand dollars per officer. That's just an example. Imagine all the other equipment that we have to carry and then you total it up. We're expending a lot of money. And I and I agree with the council. We have to be very, very specific and we have to be very selective. If they want to come here, they're gonna to have to prove that they want to work here. You're not just going to give them the job and say, here you go, you know, you're so-and-so son or so good. No, it doesn't work that way. We want professional people that are going to stay and commit. And that's what I am trying to do right now is trying to recruit those type of people. And I think we'll, we'll be okay. It takes time, but sometimes you got to just look at it. We don't want to get somebody in here that bad <coughs> for the agency and makes us look bad. We don't want that. We, we want to change the whole image. <laughs> yeah. We want yeah. to change everything. Did so, that answer your question? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Any other questions? Any other questions? Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. All right. Moving on, public works supervisor, David Morris. Good evening, Mr. Mayor, Council Persons. I need my glasses out. Okay, my report. Uh, the end, beginning day is the 28th, uh, which is on a Friday. Uh, I've got uh, Friday the 28th, Daniel Carl Vince work on Sur Surmain at Pignon and Cedar Gal, and also at Pignon and Roosevelt. Uh, and then Edward calling sick that day. Monday the 1st. Guys worked on, uh, at the surf plant. Guys worked on gas main in alley between Manzano and Hammond for customer, new connection. Uh, David Blair Road at Gran Cuya Estate on 9th and 9th Street. Tuesday the 2nd, uh, Vince uh, reread uh, water meters. Uh, Guys finished meter at one of its box, which that's the one from the day before on Manzano. Uh, and at 3 p.m., uh, the guys worked on a water line uh, to a meter box uh, for a customer on Sunset and Pignon. Uh, we had a water leak on our site, on the service site, so they had to dig out the road, on the road, and, and repair that. So that's kind of what it means. Uh, Wednesday the 3rd, uh, Carl took water samples to Albuquerque. Daniel and Edward uh, serviced the back home. Vince cut weeds. Uh, Thursday the 4th, guys put up a uh, tent at Monte Alto Plaza. Uh, guys brought dump dumpsters uh, to Carnival site. Friday the 5th, Daniel, Edward, and Vince worked on Sur Pond. Uh, covered manhole on South Roosevelt, South Ross. Uh, Daniel, Carl, Daniel, and Edward met with uh, Mr. Mayor. Uh, Vince was on brush hard. Uh, Daniel covered up 
bump our pit. So then Monday the 8th, uh, guys worked on water pond. Uh, guys worked on water leak in alley behind out, out pine alley. It's a two inch water main that uh, had an end cap and I guess maybe a little uh, air pocket or something, but it was caused that cap to pop. And uh, so we all worked on that. Uh, Tuesday the 9th, uh, worked on surf trouble at South Ross and Highway 60. Uh, and then they also, uh, we worked on the surf machine. We've been, again, trying to put it together. Uh, and then Wednesday the 10th, David met with Alpha Southwest and also met with the electrician at motor number one. The motor was pulled and taken to get repaired. Uh, worked on sewer machine, replaced water valve and a portion of a water line uh, at Gene Dressler's residence. Uh, and that's another service line that we had to replace, approximately about six feet of it. It was all pretty bad shape, so we had to work on that. And then uh, Vince uh, took sick leave that day. Thursday the 11th, uh, Daniel finished covering up meter box, uh, and Car Carl and Edward worked on sewer machine. Vince was on the brush shop. And that machine, we got it going. So it just took time to kind of get it going. We got it going. That's pretty much what I got there. And uh, a lot of the major stuff that we've done, we've involved everybody in those. Um, all those major water leaks and, and different stuff. So that was that's pretty much what I got in that. So, any questions? Adrian? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kind of curious. <laughs> yeah. And I got another deal here that I'd like to show you guys. I, they're all the same. I'll give you one too. Okay. Just bear with me. <laughs> Mr. Nieto and Council Person Burke, the members. Uh, please accept this letter. Please accept this letter of retirement from the position of supervisor of the Mountaineer Public Work Department, effective December 30th, 2018. I have enjoyed uh, working with the leading, working and learning from my colleagues for the past 27 years, and I'm ready to move on to the next phase of my life. During the next 11 weeks, I am willing to, I am willing in any way to make the transition smooth as possible. Please let me know if there's any anything specific that you would like me to do. Again, it has been a pleasure working for the town of Mount Mary. Uh, sincerely, David. Um, I just want to say again that. Uh, that I, I would never imagine being here this long. Many of times I wanted to quit because I was always looking for the right job. Or I thought, you know, hey, there's, there's got to be a job there that's right for me. And Richard, uh, he kept telling me, don't, don't let it bother you. Just let it go. Let it go, you know. And of course, everybody knows the whole thing that Richard's got. You know, they come and they go, and you're still here. I don't know whether to take that as a compliment or as an insult. <laughs> so, but anyways, it's been, uh, at the end of December, I'll have 27 and a half years. And I'm just, uh, I'm ready to, have, how do they say, give the, the rope or the reins to another person. Uh, so, yes. So anyways, I just want to express my, my gratitude, my thanks to all of you guys. And uh, appreciate it. We want to thank you so much. 27 years is a long time. I have a question. 
Does that mean that you're not going to have that seat? You're not going to come to the meetings anymore? I can't promise you. <laughs> <laughs> you know how they say, oh, I'll be there in this time. So <laughs> or at least you're being honest. Yes. Maybe you'll come up here one Yeah. <laughs> Pardon me? Maybe you'll be in one of these chairs one day. He <laughs> 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 comes out of you. So. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. 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 He just reads. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> well, first of all, Dennis is out of the office this week. He's attending the court certification class year number three, which is pretty impressive and hard to believe that he, you know, that he's actually, you know, come this far. Um, since the last meeting, we've been working on quarterly reports, which include reconciling the general gas, water, payroll, bank statements balance, which is transferred to the DFA format, due at the end of October. Other reports that we are working on are 941, workers' comp, lodgers' tax, 903, gross receipts. Also, it, uh, in that period of time, there's payroll, para, new hire forms for any, any new employees coming on, or termination for uh, employees that are leaving us. So. Um, if, you know, there's a lot of paperwork involved there. We also uh, break down the paper bills, and um, I mean, it maybe doesn't sound like much, but, but it is. Also, I also want to compliment our billing clerk, Esperanza Luna, who uh, stays consistent. Uh, she's always there, does a very good job. And I mean, that's really how our county works. You know. We all work together, and I think we all work together well. Also, with our just a slightly new man. <laughs> I just I, randomly no. like think like how much is a fence gonna cost around no, no. the shop? So I'll send up to you know Valley Fencing, they send me a quote and I send it to her, she's like, Are we buying a fence? No, I'm like, no. I'm just window shopping, I swear. <laughs> <laughs> no, he did do that. And it was an email and I had a quote and I was like, and where are we installing this fence? And he's like, just window shopping fill in, you know. I just want to know, you know, so that way whenever we think of you know stuff to do, we know like hey it's gonna cost about this much. Research. Yeah, research. 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 <laughs> I wasn't sure, you know. She messaged me right away. Where are we going to? Just window shopping. Are, are, are you transitioning yet to the new accounting system? Or that yes. Is so we actually are sending off our four, first payments, one of two, I think. Yeah, I think three. it's 20% down. Yeah. No. So, and uh, Dennis has been working with them. They send him stuff. He has to fill it all the stuff out and send it back. So we're still launching in June of next year. There's a lot of surveys where uh, they're asking for information, I think, to <clears throat> what we'll do, it'll do. It'll assist them when they do come in and, and the so they customize it somewhere. Right. So we we send them all the info that we do. You know how we charge for gas, how we charge for gas. You know what our things are. So that way they can build something. So when they come here, it's mostly like training. Like this is how you want it. So, um, but it's still on target for June. Yes. Well, July, fiscal year, okay. fiscal year. So. And I think what's supposed to happen is that um, it'll be in place sooner than that, but we will parallel. Uh, for, a on, uh, for yeah. several months, just to, to make sure everything is working the way it should, then go live July. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm excited for that. It's going to be a major, major, major change. And vision is the accounting that we have at the school. And they're the same partner. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. It's going to be a lot. I mean, the other day we what spent so long waiting for six cents. <laughs> And that's going to be a thing of the past. It's going to be Perfect. Any questions for Phyllis? Moving on. Public comments. Carnival is great. Home cooking.
So let me speak on that for a while. So Carnival did great. Um, we made uh, eighty-two hundred dollars, or they made eighty, not us. They made eighty-two hundred dollars um, in ticket sales. I think it was eighty eighty-two twenty-five is the final. Um, they that's not counting food. That's only tickets. So with food. I mean, I don't know if you guys went, but the prices were high. So, surely with food, they made well over $10,000, which is good. Um, he said they did better than expected. He's going to call me in January, and we'll schedule out the next one. So, they are coming back. They have other favorites, including the Hammer, which was very widely wanted. Uh, the Tilt-A-Whirl, you know, all these other other rights. So, it should be it's great. We're trying to get it back at the same time again. Yes. So, and this is where I'm battling, and I'm pretty... Stern on it. I, people have been saying combine it with the Fourth of July. No. I see them two different things. Yes. And they're two big, two different big events. Why have one big, big event and not have two big events? So, I'm, I'm totally opposed to, to the Fourth of July. Um, I want to keep it. You know, I, it would be nice to keep it for, for the homecoming. It if would you, be if you were leaning towards the Fourth of July, <laughs> then bring it back twice. Yeah. You still keep it for homecoming. But see, I think it's something well, special you know, instead of replacing something that. special. And if you bring it back two times a year, then you're gonna, you know, it's gonna split. I, I'm, I'm really just on that homecoming once a year, homecoming. I'm just on that. But I we think should have it on Thursday, great. Friday, Saturday as well. Yeah. Instead so of Sunday, because Sunday's a Monday right. like a morgue. And, <laughs> yeah. No, I agree. So it really depends. It really depends. We would have to kind of shoot for like a week that they're kind of closer. The reason why they take so long is because you know they finish up on Sunday somewhere, and by the time they come and everything, they're ready to go on Friday. So, you know, we could talk to them, see if they can come earlier. But I think for our community, I think people go out more on right. Thursday, Thursday, Friday, Friday and Saturday. Saturday Especially now that school gets out on Thursday. Yeah. You know. yeah. No, I agree. Um, we'll, we'll ask for that. Um, like I said, people have requested the hammer next time. And then to keep the zipper. They really love that one too. So. And my question was the portion of the proceeds that went to the town. Or, or, or how, where? So we got 10%, which was $825. Um, I had agreed with the school, so it had to go to a nonprofit. Obviously, the town is not a nonprofit, so we put it went to the Jubilee. Being the president of the Jubilee, I had talked to Maria Ruby. We talked about uh, splitting it half with the school, since it was like kind of like a school function as well. So we got four twelve for the Jubilee, and then the four twelve went to the school, and they put it in their fund. Not in the whole fund, they but I mean, it's, you know, for they put it. So the only complaint that we had, there was only one complaint, and I just heard about it today. The people that own the um, insurance portion. I guess it was a miscommunication. They only wanted the porta potty, not an actual ride on their property, so they were a little upset about that, but we just know next time not to even probably even use that. We'll just uh, try to avoid that by all costs. And they felt that was kind of a liability thing. Yeah. But we were, I mean, we were, the town is obviously insured and the, the carnival itself provide proof of insurance. Uh, you know, it's very unlikely. But I understand their, their concern, but, you know, those miscommunications. I apologize. That they did go up in their price to purchase the property for twenty-eight thousand dollars. So they'll be sitting on it for probably a long time. Don't they believe in negotiation? Uh, I don't know. I, I actually have the, the. I talked to the daughter that the father's actually going to come back, and he actually did during the meeting. But I ignored it. Um, but I'll talk to him and kind of see. But I. 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 I from a town perspective, the 25000 they were asking at first seems very good. And I mean, the property itself, I've asked a few people what they thought it would be, probably be like 15, 20. It's really the location that is everything. Because yeah. it's only 50 foot by 150 foot, so it's not huge. But um, I think we could have negotiated, you know, went with the 25000 but 48, I mean, that's double the price. I just think that's that it could be, if you could get it, or hope, wait until they are willing to negotiate. Yeah. Even as it is that um, the insurance trailer could be used as restrooms, information, first aid station for no. any event. Plus, so there's two rides they bring. Right. You know, there's room for that. There's what? Oh. There's two rides they didn't even bring. Yeah. yeah. Right in the street. Yeah, people right. asked, uh, you know, what, what was the electricity bill like? We, I don't know if you guys saw, they have generator trailers. Yeah. We do not. Yeah, we don't. It's nothing. There's no nothing. We actually, we gave $825. That's me. And a fun time. Because, I mean, I kids' faces from yeah. left ear to right ear were. What did you guys think? I thought it was great. It was great. 
Used and to have one every year. And the parade. The parade. Oh, yeah. oh, the parade. The parade. Yeah. The parade was really good. Yeah. Peter, did you go on all the rides? Uh, no. <laughs> Peter, did you go on all the rides? Peter, did you go on all the rides? No. I went on two. I went on three. I went on the first one, the swings, and on that turny thing, which I will never do again. <laughs> I'm sure my brain just locked like, I, can't I, I can't believe I went on these as kids. <laughs> no. Now, uh-uh. Uh, uh, if you guys go in to see DM uh, Motor Vehicle, uh, Gloria threw up on one of the rides, so oh, well, yeah, I, we can, we can okay. throw that out. I was going to say, we didn't see Gloria's face, but, so. Yeah, she did throw up on one of the rides. Oh, yuck. So. No, she, uh, she went to the back. She, she got off and she walked to the back of, you know, one behind the house, that haunted house thing, or fun house thing, and let go. <laughs> the kids looked like they were having a ball. Oh, they were having a blast. I like that slide. Yeah, yeah. So, it was great. And then, um, what else was I going to say? I was going to say something else. But, oh, I'm going to bring probably to the council next meeting. We need to name that. I'm tired of Burnside. Yes. I'm tired of something. Yes. We need to name it. It has to have a name. So, I don't know what we're going to call it, but it has to have a name. So, think of ideas. If you guys have ideas, bring them. What's that? But, uh, for the burn site. I'm tired of calling it the burn site. It's oh. just so negative. The right. burn site. You right. know, it's like, it should be, I don't know. I don't know what we're going to call it. I've been it. calling it burn site. Mom, you're burn site. Burn site. Mom, you're plaza. No, I'm going to say DM. Okay. I don't know. Uh, the burn site. At one time we were thinking of selling it. To me, I I don't think we should sell it because I feel that that's an ideal, like the carnival. Where were we gonna put the carnival? I mean, uh, and it was an ideal place and people weren't uh, couldn't get down or just they could park along the highway uh, to see. Yeah. Which you will be ideal I agree. to be able to buy that extra space you'll think there. You'll lots of reasons to use it too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think I think what was nice was all that gravel that somebody recommended to lay there. Mm -hmm. and that really made a difference yes. with our carnival rides and everything. You'd be nice to put a big old pump. The way we did the fourth was awesome. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Little venue around there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I will say though, I know how the room feels from the, from the response while ago. But I got hit up a lot about the, about the parade coming back twice a year, and I, I get it how everybody feels about oh, the carnival. The carnival. the carnival coming back to, uh, during the Fourth of July weekend. One well, and some of the things I talked to the people about were um, what we used to do for Fourth of July. We used to have alumni tournaments. Anybody remember that? Anybody ever played? Um, Kurt Stevens, I think, ran those for a minute. There was other than just moving around to the park, the, the, the community center. There was a arm wrestling tournaments, there was all kinds of different things that went along with the fourth, but I said, you know, we'll mention it to, to the mayor, I know how you feel now, but uh, it's, and also we'll bring money to the Jubilee Committee yeah. for, for other things we can do, but that's just neither here or there, it's just people do come to you and they say, hey, look, man, that was so good, we should, we should have it twice a year, mm -hmm. uh, so well, I'll bring it up. Again, I know how the room feels. What the July weekend? Mm -hmm. I don't think it's on its toes too much. You know, I think, you know, and one thing maybe they would do, because they're right there in McIntosh, they're not that far. Maybe they'll bring one or two rights. Maybe the Ferris wheel and, oh. and something. Not be an all-out carnival. You know, maybe just like a few rights. I just, I, I worry, you know, you give someone something and they, they like it and then you, you over give it, you know, and then they just like, they're like, yeah. mm, you know, too I much. There should be trial and error so, too. Yeah. You know, you're on the committee, Jimmy committee. Uh, um, I'll tell you, you I'll, I'll, well, yeah, I'll tell you public again now. I want to be on the committee. So I've told you in your office, I, I want to get on the committee. Uh, Fourth of July was a Fourth of July was a hell of a thing for me as a kid. I, I just remember that fondly. You know what I mean? Like, it was great. Uh, Mountain Range used to. Gosh, Michelle can remember me. I graduated with her daughter. You know, then and uh, and you know it was it was bumper bumper traffic in Mountain Air. It was it was morning to night. Uh, the dance was right after the fireworks people laid blankets in the park. I went to you petitioning you for that. Mm -hmm. Big time. I wanted the I wanted the fireworks back at the park. And I wish that we could so I the know. issue there is really the property owner. Yes. At the time the people that own and they still own the property, but he was the fire chief. So he was the fire chief at the time. So he didn't have a problem lighting the fireworks right. in his own property. We'd have to get, we can there's, talk to them and see what they we'd say. Have to get them on board. But back in the day if you guys weren't here, if you guys didn't come to visit, what they did was you went up to the park now we get to charge per car load and stuff like that, but back in the day there was no charge to go up there. And you just laid your blankets on the park floor. And it was neat, man. You go up there and you get to see these, you looking for your family. Of course, we're all family around here, right? You're looking for your family, family, your own cousins, and everything else. The fireworks started to go up just north of the park. The fire department set up out there. And uh, 
people parked along the highway out going toward Manzano that didn't want to come just sit in the, in the, in the park. They just did it on their own. Yeah. It was more, I, I felt it was more community orientated back then. Everybody just got out of the park right there. You lived there then. But uh, you lived up the road with my mom. But uh, it was just so neat. I remember the 4th of July finally, like I said, after the yeah. fireworks that night, at, at 9 they started. Or I almost, they were almost done by that time because it was dark. Then the dance started. Mm -hmm. The dance went to 1. Mm -hmm. I think the carnival would replace some of that atmosphere right there. And it could be a different hours, Peter. You could you even tell them, well, let's start it at this hour and run it until midnight or whatever. Adding to the fun of the 4th of July. But that doesn't mean we have. I just, yeah. opinion. And people came to me with that. I thought that was great. I only had to go one day to the carnival because of work schedule, but uh, it was a it was neat. Man. That, no, I got a candy apple. apple. Yeah. I went for a candy apple. I wanted everybody to know that. I, just, I remember that so damn much. I wanted a candy apple and I went and got one. So I got to do it. That's first <laughs> night, that Friday night after the game. Oh my God. Oh, yeah. I was like, it was an amazing feeling. It was just like it was this mountain air. Like yeah. it didn't, it hadn't felt like that in so long. It was just so different. But, That's um, what we want to really yeah. create. Right. 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 And, and a lot of the things that were, that, that's happening, it just takes a call. Like, KNW coming for the 4th of July, the, the, the walk, rock wall, you know, now the carnival. All it's taking is a phone call. So if you guys think of anything, just let us know. We'll do it. Like, Some of this we talk about, we'll talk about later, but we, do we get all the Shriners to check? Yes, I have. And um, they have, they, I have to call in January to, to book them. But yes, they... They used to come every year for the 4th of July. You remember the small cars, guys? Mm -hmm. the, the big grown men and those little tiny cars? It's mm -hmm. so nostalgic for me. I saw that in a different parade in Arizona, and I'm like... It just brought me right back. I'm like, damn, we used to have those around there. You know, yeah. little things like that. Having the Shriners come down, there's different sheriffs. Possibly. And I have called them, so that they should come. And... Yeah. I want to help you, but I want to help build our 4th of July back to kind of what it was yeah. before back then. Yeah. And I don't think the carnival would hurt them. Yeah. You know, I think it would help it. One of the comments that I've heard from out there, that maybe one year down here at the, mm -hmm. and then go back one to year the, to the park. Yeah, mm -hmm. for, the for the 4th of July. For the 4th of July. And then this year, we are going to have it back at the 4th this year. I think why it works so good over here is because over there, you just like pay us a fee and you go set up wherever. This was more organized. We had actual labels, you know, you, you go to section C, you know, or A or whatever. If we did that up there, I think it would work totally. I think if we just blocked out that square and actually put all the vendors in one spot and anything else in another, I think it would work out. We'll, we'll see. Uh, the fireworks were way too far at the, at the thing. We have to bring those forward. Yeah. That's all in July, so we're still in a whole year. Um, any other comments? Any comments from council? Uh, it's not a comment, but uh, some of you know about our little boy that has cancer at school. Uh, if there is any way that you can help the family with money or whatever, because he's starting to take his treatments mm -hmm. and he can't keep anything down and they're asking for donations for insurance. I asked the mom and she said he prefers chocolate over the other. And if you have the insurance, you know, oh, maybe Take it to, he's up at, he's a junior high, he's sixth grader. Maybe take it up there and then somebody from the office can uh, <laughs> call the, the parent to come. Because that day you, you could tell that he wanted stuff to eat from there, but he knew he couldn't keep it down. And I asked the mom, and he, she said he prefers the chocolate. The National Honor Society is working on that. We. Uh, town Hall, you can take it to Town Hall, you can take it to the school, both are, are doing it with that donations already at the, at the Town Hall, they couldn't pick those up, I think they made two runs so far, so. As for on the road, they brought the one today over to the gym. Oh, perfect, so, so yeah. yeah. I talked to his mom, and she said she was going to try and get me a to get to, uh, to pay for it. But I gave her a donation, she said uh, probably Medicare will help them with the insurance. Mm -hmm. So go look into it. Mm -hmm. Alright, any other comments? Uh, motion to adjourn? I'll make a motion to adjourn. Yeah, a motion by uh, David to adjourn, a second by Juanita Roll Call. David. <laughs> by Richard! A motion by Richard to adjourn, a second by Juanita Richard. Four. Juanita. Four. 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 Four